Good morning. It's good to connect with you today for a, a moment of worship on this Sunday, on Valentine's Day. And it's also the Transfiguration a Sunday, Transfiguration Sunday, where we uh, recognize this uh, important moment in the life and ministry of Christ. Uh, today we come, I come to you today uh, from a home in Wiley as uh, weather out there, as you can easily tell, it is not that great today. It is, it is cold and there's, there's snow and um, today as we're worshiping differently, my thoughts and, and prayers really are with all those who have to be out working uh, in the elements, uh, all of our ranchers who are calving right now, our farmers and uh, highway workers who are who are out there keeping uh, things going. I appreciate uh, uh, your efforts and your work today. Um, and so uh, whenever you're able to catch this, if you're not catching it live and you're out working today, know that I appreciate you and I appreciate uh, your efforts uh, today, especially so. Uh, today we'll follow a, a brief order uh, of worship um, as we uh, take time uh, to connect uh, with our God, to connect with each other. There is music for today. I've uh, uh, followed inspiration from our pianist, uh, Becky Rush, who uh, uh, during the Christmas season put together a playlist that, from YouTube and uh, I have made one today for to go with today's worship, and it's linked there. Um, as far as you know, including music in with worship as we do it here, part of the the challenge with that is uh, uh, equipment and a little bit of the the streaming rights and all. And it, it's just simply um, uh, right now more fruitful to put time into creating good YouTube playlist and uh, uh, making that available for your reflection as you take time to worship today. So I advise to enter into a time of worship. I'll open us in prayer. I'll use a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer, and then uh, we will go from there. So I invite you to pray with me. O oh God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Well, at this moment, I invite you to take a moment to share in the affirmation of faith. Let me get my copy here. If you have this memorized, I invite you to uh, join in with me, or if you have a copy of the Apostles' Creed handy, I invite you to, to join in. Uh, if you don't, that is okay. I uh, accept this as an offering as I share this uh, uh, affirmation of faith, this ancient statement of faith that connects us. So I invite us to join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, at this moment, I invite us to take a, a moment to pause as uh, in our morning of worship for a moment of prayer. I invite us to take a pause and to lift up anything that's on our hearts and our minds this morning. And we'll take a moment to pause for prayer, and then we'll pray together, and we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray.
Almighty and gracious God, we come here today as your people. We come worshiping in a different way than we normally do. But Lord, we know that wherever we are, we are your church. We are thankful that we are connected across the miles, that we are connected across distance, that the, the grounding that we have in you is greater than anything we can have imagined. Lord, as we worship today, on this Sunday where we celebrate the transfiguration of Christ, and as we also worship on this Valentine's Day, Lord, remind us of the great love and care you have for us, that you sent your Son into the world, that we are called to be connected with him, called to find the true hope in life, and him. And Lord, we're thankful for the love that you share with us through Jesus Christ and a love that is guided by the Holy Spirit that impacts us each and every day. Lord, as we're here today, remind us of all those who find themselves struggling today. We lift them up to you. We lift up all those who find themselves struggling with health concerns, or work, relationships, or school. Lord, we lift them up and ask that you surround those who are in need of your love and your care. And however we can extend your love and care through our hands or our feet or our voice, Lord, call on us and move us to do so. We are especially mindful today of all those who are out working in the elements. We pray for your safety and protection to be with all those who are working for our highway workers, for our farmers and our ranchers and our first responders, all who are finding their work more challenging today. Lord, we lift them up to you. And again, we pray for your safety and your protection to be with them. Lord, as we're here today, we're also mindful of the blessings and the joys that we find in life. And Lord, we're, we're thankful for the blessing of being your people of being connected with you, of being grounded in your hope and in your love. We're thankful for all those who are in our lives that connect us uh, with you. We're thankful for our, our family and our friends, especially on this Valentine's Day and the love that we share. Lord, remind us of how we are your people, how we are grounded in your hope and grounded in your life that is everlasting. We pray all these things today in your son's holy name. And may we pray as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, today for our, our reading for the sermon and our gospel reading, we're reading out of the gospel of Mark. And we're in uh, chapter 2, <clears throat> verses, uh, or chapter, excuse me, chapter 9, uh, verses 2 through 9. And I invite you to, to hear these words from uh, Mark's gospel. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there a cloud came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one was with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Word of God for us, the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Transfiguration Sunday is kind of a, an odd holiday in some ways, or a, a holy day in, in the life of the church, and because it's, it's the last uh, Sunday in the season you know, after the Epiphany. We're getting ready for, for Lent. Ash Wednesday is uh, this coming Wednesday. It's uh, kind of hard to believe that, that it is, it's that time uh, as we go into the season of Lent. But we have this moment that is peculiar. It's a, I would say, a, a high moment in the life of Christ, a, a moment, a high moment in the ministry of Christ. I mean, not just because he's on the mountaintop, but really it was a moment that solidified, you know, the, the importance of Christ, how uh, Christ mattered. And it was recognized by the disciples and and he had this moment there with Moses and Elijah. I mean, it was a true mountaintop experience. A mountaintop experience in, in the truest sense. That high point in life. Last Sunday, I talked a little bit about being in the valley of life. And if we really think about how we experience our lives, we have a lot of these peaks and valley moments. We have these, these high points in life where uh, things are awesome, they are amazing, and we just want to stay on those high points. I mean, we just don't ever want to get away from them. We want to be in that moment forever. But the reality is we have to come down off the mountain at some point. We have to go back into our daily lives. We have to go back into the regular every day. We have to go back to the ordinary Tuesdays of life. But I think this reminder here, though, is that those high moments, they do matter, and they can carry us forward. But what I believe is really important for us, what's most important for us as we think about this moment in the life of ministry, is how Christ is with us, how Christ came down the mountain as well. This was not the, the end of Jesus' ministry. This was not you know, the, the final summation of Christ's ministry. Instead, this was a moment, it was an important moment in his ministry and in his life and in the life of the disciples, but it was not the defining moment. Christ came down that mountain. Christ went down into the valley. And I believe as we consider how Christ is with us, how Christ journeys with us in our lives, that as much as Christ is with us on the mountaintop, on those high points of life, those moments we love to celebrate, the, 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 the marriages, the baptisms, the, the confirmations, the birthdays, the anniversaries, all those high moments of life, or graduations. I mean, you can build a whole list of what the high points of life are. They matter. They are important. But when we go into the everyday, in those days where we are challenged, as Christ is with us in the high points of life, so is Christ with us when we are in the valleys of life, when we are in the low points, after we have heard challenging news, about someone we love and care about, after we have received that diagnosis from the specialist, as we have received that, that statement from the bank, as we have heard the words that break our heart. Christ is with us in those moments as well. And I believe what we can hold on to as a people of faith, as a people grounded in the hope and in the gospel, is that even though these moments take place, the peaks and the valleys, it is the resurrection of Christ that matters. It can seem like a little odd, perhaps, talking about the resurrection today when Easter is you know, several weeks off, it's many weeks off, and we won't be looking at Easter until you know, the first weekend in April. But we are a resurrection people. We are a people who know that joy and hope and the everlasting promise of Christ is greater 
than all the things that challenge us, greater than the valleys of life, greater even than the peaks of life. That resurrection hope defines us. And in this moment, we can see Christ is, is pointing the disciples towards the resurrection. He's starting to point them towards. I mean, that last verse it kind of seems a bit odd because, I mean, when I have a, an amazing high moment of life, I want to tell everybody about it. I mean, I'm, I'm taking those pictures on Instagram. I'm, I'm sharing them. I'm letting people know. And I want to talk about it. I mean, those high moments of life, they are awesome. But Christ here, I mean, he shows kind of a restraint, but I believe he's pointing towards the resurrection. As they, it was verse 9, as they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Many times the disciples uh, considered and kind of struggled with some of the, the phrases that Christ would use to point towards the resurrection. I mean, he was telling them about the resurrection. He was telling them, uh, you know, about the everlasting life. I mean, telling them all about these things, and yet they struggled with it. And I believe even here in this moment, Christ is pointing towards the resurrection. Christ is pointing towards a joy and a hope that is greater than anything in life we can experience. So, brothers and sisters, I would encourage us to, to truly value those peaks in life, those mountaintop experiences. They matter. They are important. But also know that when we go through the valleys of life, when we go through those challenging times of life, our God is with us in those moments. Christ journeys with us through the valley as we come down from the mountain. And I believe we are people who look towards the joy of the resurrection. We are a people who look towards the joy and the hope that comes from Christ that is everlasting. So let us be grounded in this hope. Let us be grounded in this truth as we go forward, as we prepare to go through the rest of our lives, not just today or even this season, but our whole lives as a people of joy, as a people grounded in the hope of Christ. Amen. Well, today uh, I would encourage you to take time to reflect on the gospel reading. I've included that in the description uh, today. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at that, to read it again. Uh, Maybe as you're listening to the music, that's also included there on the, on the playlist, uh, just to reflect on what these words mean for you. I believe we are a blessed people because we have Scripture. We have Scripture where we can go and, and read and connect with God. So I would encourage you to take time for that today, especially as uh, you know, we're, many of us are going to be indoors with the weather and the conditions, uh, maybe even for the next few days. So take time to connect with God. Take time to connect um, with the hope that we find in our God and we find in Scripture. So go and be blessed today. Uh, go forth and know the peace and the everlasting life that is found in Christ that is with us always. So, brothers and sisters, go forth into your week. Be blessed. And until we connect again, amen.